Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Curator's Corner here at the National Civil War Naval Museum. I'm Jeff Seymour. This episode, we'd like to discuss the articles of clothing here in this case. These articles belong to a surgeon in the U.S. Navy by the name of John T. Luck. Mr. Luck is a little bit of an interesting story in and of himself. He was born in Iowa about 1838, uh, went to school at Harvard, uh, completed his medical degree there, and when the war broke out, he looked at joining the Navy and finally received his commission in 1862. Well, the summer of 1863 finds him assigned to the South Atlantic Blockading Squadron. Their big mission in the summer of 63 is to capture Charleston, South Carolina. On July the 18th, after the disastrous attack by the 54th Massachusetts and other units on Battery Wagner on Morris Island just outside of Charleston, Surgeon Luck was sent from his ship, the USS Ottawa, ashore to assist with the wounded. And apparently the carnage was so bad that day that they were having a difficult time both in burying the dead and dealing with wounded soldiers. And Mr. Luck wandered into Confederate lines, was captured, and saw some of the after effects of the battle from the other side of the conflict. Mr. Luck then uh, spent time in Confederate prison hands until he was exchanged by about November of 63. He returned to New York and began a letter writing campaign about what he saw for, of the 54th Massachusetts, which was an all black infantry regiment. Timing, though, about this battle. As you can imagine, many of the stories about battles always ended up in the newspapers. But look at the timing here. It's July 1863, so most big stories, the big headlines, are about Gettysburg. The, sto the story on the attack on Battery Wagner is kind of buried in fourth, fifth, sixth pages of the New York Times, etc., etc. Well, because of the bravery of these black soldiers and the fact that they were paid less than their white counterparts, our surgeon Luck began a letter writing campaign to the New York papers and to Congress. And it is in a large part thanks to Surgeon Luck uh, got due recognition for these black troops and eventually led by within a few weeks of Congress considering raising the pay of black soldiers to that of white soldiers. So luck is one of those key components in, in that story. Now as we take a look at some of these items, we'll notice that he has a vest and a coat, a typical sack surgeon's coat of the time period. They are linen very fine linen. This is the vest of Surgeon Luck. And if you look real closely, you can see the fine weave of this linen, which means there was some, there was some money behind having this produced for him. If you look very closely at the seams, you will notice that it's very finely hand stitched. Now sometimes looking at clothing from the time period, it is difficult to tell the difference between machine stitched and hand stitched. Uh, pearl buttons here, so again, adding a little bit of expense to this article of clothing. The very nicely put together pockets here. Ladies and gentlemen, the back of the vest. If you notice real closely here, this is one of the hallmarks of a difference in construction design for articles of clothing for men at the time period as opposed to a modern cut. 
you will notice that there is a seam here right in the middle of the neck on the collar. Again, this is something that defines the patterns of the time period as opposed to a modern copy. So that may be something to look for if you're looking at original clothing. The jacket here is made in the same fine detail as the vest is. If we look closely, the buttons are standard U.S. Navy buttons. So, in this case, it appears to be more of a uniform look. And this is something he would have used uh, on a more of a daily basis, especially in the hot weather. We think about more wool uniforms as being typical, but many of the guys then did wear lighter coverings in order to protect themselves from the heat. Notice the fine detail of the mini pockets. We've got one, two on this side, and then one, two on this side. So there are a number of pockets for him to have papers, maybe a pen, but there are no pockets inside the coat. There is no lining. The final article that we have of Surgeon Luck is his straw hat. If you'll notice, this one is very finely woven. It's a better made straw hat. The straw hats are very typical for Navy crews, especially during the hot months of the year. And oftentimes, sailors would sit on deck and make their own straw hats. Now, if we take a look inside this straw hat, we'll notice that it has a leather hat band and a linen stuffing inside so this is this would be a more professional made hat and there are no markings inside so we cannot identify a maker but odds are he probably bought this uh, in New York before he uh, went on assignment Ladies and gentlemen, these are the articles of clothing that belong to Assistant Surgeon John Tarleton Luck, who served in the U.S. Navy from 1862 until 1868. Come to the National Civil War Naval Museum and learn about those stories you'll hear nowhere else.